Mm-mm. New bike day. Nothing beats new bike day. We got the KBO Hurricane Road electric bike. And we're gonna build it up and get out there and ride it. Let you guys know what it's about. Got the saddle. Nice looking saddle, actually. What I'm gonna do is get on the stand real quick. Really well packaged, you know? Everything is... Yeah, everything is really safely put together. This is a single speed, belt drive, e-bike with that has the hub motor in it and I'm pretty pretty jazzed about it. Belt drives are really cool in my opinion because they're so maintenance free, grease free, silent, all that stuff. Just first impressions here but the welds are really smooth. Not bad. Welds are really smooth. Can't even see them. First build up and not bad. I'm actually impressed. Fit and finish is good except for that one little blemish over here but uh, just you know just had to put the front wheel on and the stem, or the bars, kind of straighten the brake caliper a little bit because it was rubbing, but now smooth sailing. So before we get into the real world riding clips and my overall thoughts as I'm riding, what I'm gonna do is give you guys a little bit of a bike check and go over tech specs and basically everything else that you need to know about this bike. So what we have here is the KBO Hurricane and it's an all aluminum frame. You can tell that I've replaced the um, handlebars with these integrated basket bars. So what the bike originally comes with are these flat handlebars here with this 90 degree stem or 90 mil stem and a bell is included, so that's nice. Great for commuting. But the length of this bike, the length of the top tube is pretty tall. Now I'm 5'9 with a shorter-ish reach, and this is how much seat post I have exposed. And that is, I'm like on my tippy toes if I'm sitting and trying to stand flat foot. So just to give that some perspective, you might want to check the standover height of this bike, but I would say if you're shorter than 5'8, um, you might have a hard time just sitting flat on this bike and then you know putting your foot down so that's what sizing looks like with these bars installed the stock bars with the stock stem I definitely felt like the bike was too long for me so what I did is I put on this shorter stem and then I also installed these basket bars that have a big old sweep that come back toward me a little bit but then also has an integrated basket on there because I want this to be my ultimate commuter grocery runner around town ripper and having um, a basket definitely kind of adds to the whole functionality of the bike. Those aren't the stock bars that come with it. I'll link the bars in the description below if you want to check those out. I also installed some different grips here and aside from that everything else is completely stock. So let's get into the meat of the bike. You turn it on by pressing and holding this M button and you have three levels of pedal assist which you can you can flip through by pressing this button and it's clicky. All the buttons are real clicky actually. Um, so yeah, three levels of pedal assist. You go one, two, and then three. Tells you your miles per hour and how much battery you have. Very simple display, nothing to really futz around with. That kind of just adds to the whole simplicity of this bike and kind of just plays on that theme of just simple, effective, and fun. So three levels of pedal assist, uh, max pedaling speed, I'd say of 28 miles an hour. Um, if you double tap this button here, it turns on the light on the front. And that actually gives, that's actually really, really bright. If you're, you know, daytime riding or riding at night especially, that's gonna throw off just enough brightness to let people know that you're there. And that's really cool that it's integrated into this little system as well. So we turn it off there. Maybe you don't have to double tap, you just press it once. Once you turn the bike on, press it once to turn it on. Press it again to turn it off. Real simple, real easy. Mechanical disc brakes, which I will say right off the bat are kind of spongy feeling for the bike and throw off a huge squeak. Now I'm not sure if that's just the road conditions that I'm riding in and it just has like crud in there, but you can always upgrade your brake. That's easy to do. You can upgrade the calipers and then you can upgrade the, the levers if you want. This Nebula saddle is really, really, really comfortable. You know, seat bones cushion right here, but it's also really, it almost feels like a gel seat. It comes with 32C tires on there that offer just a little bit of notches in there, which are great for um, pavement riding. Um, 
I'm gonna say those are 180 mil rotors in the front. And it comes with the bottle cage as well. It also comes with fenders, which is nice. This quick release uh, seat post clamp. And again, I'm really, I'm really digging the saddle. It's really sleek looking, really comfortable, and you can ride around all day in it. And I didn't have to wear a chamois once. You got points for racks on the back here, points for racks right here, and then if you want to put a fender on there as well. It comes with fenders, like I said. Comes with these, I think these are alloy pedals. Uh, just some kind of generic thing just to let you ride right out of the box. They're not the best, they're not the worst. They, they're they just fine actually for what it's worth. You're getting a single speed belt drive drivetrain, which is amazing. And you're getting a hub drive motor that puts out 350 watts peak. Battery is hidden in this down tube and puts out 345 watt hours, so plenty plenty of battery in there and it's hidden again in this down tube so you can't even tell and that's solid feeling uh, you can't even tell that this is really necessarily a, an e-bike because it doesn't look like it it just looks like it has a big down tube um, you can't pull the I don't think you can pull the battery out because it is integrated so tightly in here you charge it right here the charging port is on the either side of this um, right there with this little uh, rubber flap that fits snug in itself so no water is getting in there when you're not charging it. The cabling is really clean. It's got this little cable guide here to help keep things all intact and really clean actually. The stock grips that it came with were just a little bit oversized for my hands. For somebody who likes a larger grip, you would like probably the stock ones. The battery display looks awesome. You can see it just fine in the bright sunlight. I still have the plastic on there, never taking it off OCD. But yeah, man, this whole bike as it comes is a great package. Right out the box, you're ripping on an e-bike that's single speed that can go up to, I think it's 18 miles, depending on like your terrain. It's a lot of fun to ride. And with all of that being said, let's just jump into some real riding and the thoughts that I'm having as they're coming up. Hey, today we are commuting to work, testing out this KBO Hurricane, which is a perfect little commuter e-bike. Here we go. I'm gonna get this thing going. I'm gonna start on level two and we're off. So, this is gonna be my commuting bike and I'm hauling ass right now. I'm going 16 miles an hour already. Got my coffee. Oh, shout out to Outer Shell. These are handmade bags out of San Francisco. I'll have a review about this later, so if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned for that. But um, otherwise, yeah, man, we're we're gonna see how this bike does commuting to work. Man, I gotta put on some gloves. Thought I lost, almost lost my banana. My work commute is about 20 miles, and woo, 20 miles and about 900 feet of elevation gain. So, we're gonna see how this single speed e-bike does in that regard. So, I'm starting off in level two because my, my goal is to wait till we get to the steeper sections, kick it into three, and then see how it climbs. But, I don't know if this bike is necessarily made for climbing or will even do good with climbing. Let's say if we turn it off completely, Um, yeah, it feels fine. It feels like a city bike. So I have the motor completely turned off and I'm just pedaling now on metal, manual power. Squeaky brakes, but that feels fine. Definitely not enjoyable. So we're gonna kick it back in in number two. And now we're cruising. And the times that I've ridden it and I've had to go just like a little bit uphill. It's kind of, it's really difficult actually. So first impressions on this, this ride, after I changed the handlebars, the ones that come with it stock are flat bars and 
this is a lot this has a longer top too so it's a little more road friendly in that regard just because you're a little bit more stretched out but it's also not as comfortable for me but anyway i switched the bars out and since doing that now i have this you know pretty aggressive back sweep and this thing's way comfy i'm still leaning forward a little bit but i'm not stretched out uncomfortably so you know incredibly smooth and silent in its operation reliable maintenance free hassle free grease free kind of everything that you would want in a everyday commuting bike a belt drive is set up for and it makes a lot of sense on a bike like this because of those things you know if you want to go and ride in inclement weather or if you're truly using this as an everyday commuter bike you don't have to worry about maintaining the chain or it breaking um, and the lifespan on a belt drive is typically much longer than that of a chain mechanical disc brakes sleek slim profile you can't you can't even tell that this is an e-bike the only thing that gives it away is a little bit larger of a what's this down tube and a motor in the back of it otherwise it looks pretty felt to me the seat that comes with it is this really cushy gel seat it's really narrow usually when like I think of a gel seat I think of like a big you know wide seat that gets actually uncomfortable for me over time but having this one be so narrow but it's also gel like a harder gel at that it's uh it's really comfy so I'm not even rocking a chamois right now whereas before when I do this commute on my road bike I'm definitely wearing a chamois, but don't feel like I have to do that right now at all. Now, we started this ride at 100% battery, and again, I got about 20 miles to work, and then 20 miles back from work. About 900,000 feet of elevation gain, or change, and we're just gonna see how the battery does. Now, I brought the charger just because I'm gonna charge it when I'm at work. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> We're going up a little bit of a hill. Slow, gradual. And I'm going to kick it into three just to see how much more that helps. And yeah, I can feel it. Definitely feel it. I wouldn't say the motor's doing all the work for me. I still have some resistance. So. That's a good thing because you're still getting a bit of a workout versus letting the bike pull you. It's just, it's really just helping you make things a little bit easier. I do notice that when you start going, it takes a second for the motor to spin up and kind of sense what you're doing before it kicks in. So unlike a mid-drive motor where you pedal like barely, you get the cranks moving and the bike's already taken off on you. This one takes like maybe a rotation and a half before the motor kicks in, which is not a big deal, but something to be mindful of. Anyway, I'll check back in in a minute. All right, now we're going up our first little hill here. I gotta see how this thing... That's actually not bad. You filming? A little bit. It's like, it's weird because you still have to put an effort. All right, not bad, not bad. This is fun though, dude. Look at it. We're riding bikes to work. We're lessening our footprint. Out of the bottom. Jesus. Oh, that was, that was a tough one. I had to stand up and goose it a little bit. Going downhill is fun. I'd be willing to do this more often. Summer. You do spin out a little bit with this gearing, but no big deal. And we're going 30 miles an hour right now. Oh man, that was nice. Dude, one thing already about this bike, it feels so solid. Like if I go over a big bump, 
I don't hear anything rattling around except for the basket. But that, oh, that's on me. This feels like a solid piece of metal, but it's not even that heavy. It comes in at 35 pounds. Okay, my GoPro battery died, but battery update after 20 miles, we're at halfway there. That's great. If you're gonna commute miles like this, you have to have an e-bike, I think, <laughs> to make it fun. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this thing feels smooth and solid. And solid by, I mean like if I go over a bump or a rut, nothing moves around, it just, takes it and smooth because you just have one gear and you're riding just with a belt drive and it's smooth. No, you don't hear the slap of a chain or the noise of the chain. And yeah, again, you just hit a bump and this thing takes it. It is simple, functional, everything that you would want in a commuter bike, this bike is. And that's exactly and it doesn't try to do anything special. Um, you know, it's at a really sweet price point where if you're, if you're researching e-bikes, then you're gonna start seeing so many different prices ranging from $1,000 to $5,000, you know, and then you get into e-mountain bikes and those get up to like $13,000. So there's a wide spectrum here. If you're looking for an e-bike, single speed e-bike that you're just gonna use to commute with, this is a very, very, very intriguing offer. The geometry of the bike is very road um, influenced, meaning it's got a flat top tube. It's a uh, head tube angle is pretty slacked for a road bike. The fork rake is a little bit out there, but, and the wheelbase is longer and the chain stays are long. So that's that's more like commuter friendly, but then you have the boot, the you know, the motor to help boost you along, which makes it feel like a fast road bike and smooth handling road bike. Like I can sit up and I can ride, no hands, no problem. It feels very stable. Um, steering is, again, with these bars, they're aftermarket, but they feel, it feels awesome. Very controlled and very responsive. And when I had the stock bars on there, it felt the same. You know, very responsive, but while at the same time being really stable. The standover height is 31 inches and my cycling inseam is 31 and a half. So that fits, fits me just right. I wish I had about an inch of clearance, but when I'm standing over the bike, I can kind of, like I, about, I got about a half an inch, quarter inch before it starts like hitting me. All right, let's wrap this up. Now this bike has been a joy to ride. I think the price point that it's at gets you into the e-bike world at a pretty affordable price at $1,000, give or take. Um, and I think that's fair. Now this bike is kind of unique in that it's, main purpose is to be like a commuter around town flatland kind of bike if you try to ride uphill that's where things start getting a little dicey and a little bit more difficult yes you can do it but the motor doesn't really feel like it's pulling you up that being said i think if you live in a flat area and your main goal is again to just get around town and commute then i think this bike is worth checking out i love the fact that it has a belt drive that pretty much means zero maintenance in terms of having to lube your chain and just kind of futzing around with stuff like that i dig the fact that it has disc brakes although these brakes definitely need some upgrading if you're going to do some serious serious riding on it. The stock bars that come with it, the flat ones, I had to ditch those and put these back slip basket bars on there. Again, I wanted more functionality out of this bike. Having a front basket allows me to put stuff on it and load it up, and that way I can go to and from work with my backpack on the front. I can also go to the grocery store, put some groceries up front. So you may want to take a look at baskets if that's your intended use for this bike. The battery life was excellent. I was averaging about 40 miles to and from work on one charge, and that is awesome. The tires, I would say you can probably 
squeeze about a 37 C tire in there. If it's knobbier, then definitely um, you might want to consider that. But the 32s are fine if you're doing street riding. You know, all in all, this bike has been a joy to ride. And that's pretty much it. If I miss anything, please drop a comment down below and I'll make sure to answer your questions. Otherwise, you can follow me on Instagram at Tim All Day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot about this bike. I'll check you in the next video. Ride the bike. Later. Thank you.